Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher. Today we're getting the chance to give you some first impressions on the 2024 Rolls-Royce Spectre. This is the first all-electric Rolls-Royce. It makes 584 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. This is a massive 6,500 pound coupe. It's about half a million dollars, and this one is pink. So let's hop out, we'll take a walk around it, show you what this thing looks like on the outside, and then we'll take it out on the road and see what it's like to drive. Hold that door handle and it will power open the door for you. And then you pinch this button and it will shut the door. So Rolls-Royce calls this color Morganite, and well, it's pink, but it's a classy pink. It's a little bit darker than a traditional pink, and uh, man, this thing overall outside of the spec is just striking. I think it's awesome that Rolls-Royce went ahead and made their first EV a coupe, because why not? Why would they go for an SUV or a sedan or something sensible? They went all out and made this huge coupe. So this is kind of the spiritual successor to the Phantom Coupe. And uh, while it's just about the same size, this is stylistically a little bit different because it is a fastback. It's got this swooping rear three-quarter view. The roof line kind of swoops down, and uh, well, I think it looks fantastic. It's a pretty simply styled car. They like to say three pen strokes. You can see this body line that kind of goes through the middle. We've got this one at the bottom, and then of course our swooping roof line on the back of the car there. So it's a pretty simple car, but it's elegant, it's sexy, and I think that they've just done a fantastic job here with this uh, design on the Spectre. So we have 23 inch wheels. We're riding on a Pirelli P0. And despite this, and you'll see this when we go and do the drive, this car is not only silent, it also rides fantastically because of a four corner air suspension. And uh, they've made this thing otherworldly to drive. I, it's it's, it's kind of hard to put into words. Again, you'll see it once we go on the drive. But we'll walk you around this thing, we'll show you the inside, we'll show you the trunk, and then we'll go out on the road. Now, this grill, while it isn't very long this way, it's very wide, and in fact, it is the widest grill that Rolls-Royce has ever put on any of their cars. And another big difference with this grill, as opposed to grills on other Rolls-Royces, is that the Spirit of Ecstasy is on the hood instead of the grill. So she's actually kind of, what do they call it? She's like floating in a lake. <laughs> she's, uh, she's a little bit smaller as well with uh, the transition over to EVs. She has to be a bit more aerodynamic. So she's had to adapt to this whole new infrastructure as well. Rolls-Royce says this will get about 300 miles of range. And uh, as we know, other cars that are closely related to this usually exceed their estimations. And speaking of that, this Spectre is on its own platform. Don't think that this is just a BMW i7 or iX with a big pink coupe body plopped on top. This is a unique platform developed still by BMW, but specifically for Rolls-Royce and right now for the Spectre. Rolls-Royce plans to go all electric by 2030, so I imagine this platform will stick around, but uh, Boy, is this a looker. All right, let's go ahead and open up the trunk, see what we have in here. Well, for one, we have my backpack, but we also have some ardent red carpet, and you'll see this theme carried into the interior. This is quite the bespoke build on this particular car, and it is why I chose it out of the lineup. Um, we've got a bit of under... Um, trunk floor storage here for your charging cable and whatever else you need. It's a bit of a narrow trunk opening, but it does go quite deep. And luckily you have this little cubby down here if you want to store some more things. I love how on Rolls Royces, they use the same switch that you get out of a BMW, but it has a little Rolls Royce on it. It's a unique button design little graphic here on the Rolls Royce. So I love that. Power trunk, of course. And we have clear taillights on this car that are very intricately designed. We've got bits of chrome in there, and we've got a bit of metal on the side there. You can see our Rolls-Royce badge. Oh man, such a cool thing. So 
This is a coupe, it's a two-door of course, and the doors open like a wraith, though don't get this confused with a wraith because, like I said, spiritual successor to the Phantom Coupe, so quite a bit larger than a wraith, and that shows when you step into the back seat. We'll move this seat forward. You can see that opens up a bit of room back here. We, of course, have the starry sky, which is done in white on this car, kind of unique. And we have a two-tone grace white and ardent red configuration or spec uh, here in the car as well, as well as a bespoke audio system. We'll test it out later on the drive. Oh, man, this is so cool. All right, shag pile carpet. I'm taking this out. Look how thick the carpet is. <laughs> it's like a rug you'd pull out of your grandma's house. Love it. Okay, let's hop back here. Man, I don't even want to put my shoes on this carpet. And let's pull the seat back to where it was, and we'll test out this rear seat situation. Okay, so to be honest with you, I have enough room. Uh, I feel like I'm in a sedan, um, and that goes for headroom as well. Even with this uh, coupe roofline, I still have enough headroom, and uh, sitting behind myself at 5'11", I've got enough legroom as well. So as far as amenities go back here, you've got a center console with two USB-C ports. You have cup holders, of course, to uh, set your champagne flutes if you desire, because this specter still goes by this whole ideology of you should be able to set off, stop, corner, everything without spilling your passenger's champagne. So you can still do that here in the Spectre. You've got your own climate controls back here and you've got heated seats as well with three settings. And the vents back here still make the same little ding noise that they do up front. Uh, okay, let's get out of the back seat now. Oh, and you can mess with the stars up here as well. You can turn them on and off from the back seat, which I enjoy. While that's going back to position, you can see we have our Rolls-Royce Goodwood placard here on the door sill. And of course, this whole Goodwood theme of having the V12 and everything like that, it is definitely a departure not having a V12 in a Rolls-Royce, but you guys will see when we go out on the road and we drive this, as much as I love V12s, this is the way to have a Rolls Royce. You can see our door panel here. We've got a ton of wood. Look at this piece of wood. Wild. And of course, white continued. We've got our pretty simple uh, window switch, memory seats, massaging seats, and of course, they're heated and cooled as well. Beautiful speaker covers for our bespoke audio. hop in here, you just put your foot on the brake and it will shut the door. All right, let's bring the specter to life. It's genuinely like putting on a pair of noise canceling headphones when you get in here. I just got a set of AirPod Maxes a few months ago and genuinely getting in this car, it's like you're putting on AirPod Maxes. It's really that serene and that quiet. And it's pretty simple up here as well. Even though this is an EV, don't think that it's 10, 20, 30 years ahead of its time. We still have physical controls, which I love to see. Heated and cooled seats. We have our pretty normal off soft, medium high and max, a little Rolls Royce climate control here with these kind of sliding temperature selectors, which is kind of neat. We've got cup holders up here as well, which have a GoPro battery in them currently. And uh, check out this key as well. That's the wrong key. Don't look at that, Rolls Royce. Okay, <laughs> so here's the key. It's ardent red as well. It matches the interior and the steering wheel. And, and uh, it's, it's got some good weight to it. It's fantastic. Set that there for right now. We, of course, have a center console, two US, USB-C ports, as well as a wireless charger that I've got my phone on right now. And we don't have a Monroney for the specific car, but we do have a bit of a fact sheet, and you can see a couple of things about this car. The Morganite exterior color. We've got Tudor Oak, which is the wood that we have, and we've gone over pretty much everything else. 6,300 pound curb weight, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, and around 580 horsepower. I've read a couple of different uh, 
number numbers for the horsepower but it doesn't matter because this is a rolls royce and horsepower and torque has never really mattered to these cars of course they have to have their waft ability they have to be able to get out of the way in a timely manner uh, but they have to be able to take you and your passengers in comfort and uh, this car does that so well i'm super excited to take you guys out on the road in it so here's our cluster it's very simple and you can actually have this bespoke to the car that you order and they'll make this in the factory they'll set it to whatever color you want so that's kind of neat otherwise we've got a big central mounted volume knob and we finally have a unique name for our rolls royce infotainment it is called spirit that's it rolls royce's version of iDrive is just called spirit and well it looks like the infotainment system that I just mentioned, but uh, well, it's unique and uh, it's called Spirit because the little spirit of ecstasy here on our controller. We have wireless Apple CarPlay in this car and it's not an overbearing screen. This isn't a massive screen that connects from the cluster over all the way to our infotainment. It does a pretty good job of kind of staying separate here. And we have physical controls down here to get us back to our navigation. You can see uh, we're at Meadowbrook Hall today in Rochester Hills, a beautiful place to start and end our drive here. And, uh, well, this is just such a cool thing. I don't know if I have anything else to go over. We've got a pretty simple display uh, for our lights up here. That whole thing lights up, and we can toggle on, our, uh, on and off our stars. We can turn on our shooting stars. We've got white leather-wrapped visors. This is just a beautiful, beautiful spec. So, uh, well, why don't we go ahead and take this Rolls-Royce Spectre out on the road and see what it's like to drive. Put our seatbelt on. And we have a column shifter up here wrapped in white leather. I always say column shifters are most at home in luxury cars. And, uh, well, what's a Rolls-Royce without a column shifter? Pull towards you and up. That puts you into reverse. We've got pretty light steering here in the Spectre, easy to maneuver. Pull it towards you again and push down, that puts you into drive. And we also have regen braking and you activate that by pressing the B on your column shifter. And this will one pedal drive completely. It'll take you to a stop. You can see it just stopped me there without me having to apply the brakes. So this is nice because you can kind of pick how to drive this car. A lot of Rolls-Royce owners, Rolls-Royces do this thing where they're so massive and they have so much weight to them where when you get going, you kind of just keep going. So if you don't want to drive with regen braking, if you don't want a one pedal drive, you can leave it in regular drive and it'll do the, the Rolls-Royce thing where it just kind of carries on forever. This is what I imagine it's actually like to own a Rolls-Royce. <laughs> oh man. Look at this display. <laughs> we've got a blue ghost and then we've got two green specters. Let's add the pink one here to the lineup. <laughs> oh man, how is this real life, guys? I really don't know. So I talked earlier about power figures and how well they don't really matter. And oh man, it is just such a different feeling in a Rolls Royce and it extends to the EV. It's almost as if you're being pulled along, not pushed. It delivers its power in such a way, it's still very Rolls Royce-ish. They're not going against anything that they've already built for the last 100, 120 years, however long they've been around. It's still unapologetically Rolls Royce and I absolutely love that. And I love the red steering wheel as well. This car as spec is just over $500,000 and the Spectre in base form starts in the mid $400,000 range. I'll put an exact number here on the screen for you. <sighs> yeah, there's not even really an immense feel of body roll or anything. It just, it just wafts off. The waftability is still here with the Spectre. <laughs> oh man. So this is, uh, 
I, I touched earlier on how this is a unique platform to the Spectre. This is not shared with the i7 or the iX or anything like that. Those cars have steel and aluminum mixture with their platform. This car is all aluminum, everything. The platform, the bodywork, every piece of metal on this is aluminum. And you'd think that maybe that would make it a bit lighter, but no, it is still 6,500 pounds. But that's a good thing. It's commanding, it's safe, and it's just such a proper Rolls Royce. I'm just content to be existing within the atmosphere of the Spectre. And I can appreciate that. This car makes a statement and it's just so relaxed to drive it. Oh, one pedal driving. You're not enough for me there. <laughs> Coming to a stop. But I will say the brake pedal actually feels quite nice. It's not uh, vague EV brake pedal. Um, it doesn't fall victim to that. Now, the steering in this car feels slightly heavier than what you get in the Ghost, and that could be due to the fact that this car is 30% more rigid than the Ghost. With that being said, it does mean that, it, of course, it is more agile in the corners. Even though it's 6,500 pounds, it does drive quite nicely. It's so impressive to me that Rolls-Royce can build a car and put it on 23-inch wheels and have it still be this serene inside. That speed warning is a little bit irritating. And this is as simple as the cluster is. There's no sort of configurations. This is just how you have it. You've got your power reserve on the left, of course, as uh, to pay homage to the ICE powered Rolls Royces. We've got our speedo in the middle and on the right we have our range. You can see we have 254 miles left as well as a percentage gauge for our battery. So it's a simple elegant look there for the cluster and it gets the job done. It looks fantastic. I am just loving this car really. <laughs> what a treat honestly to be invited out to test this thing out today. Sometimes I have to pinch myself in situations like this. Rolls-Royce also does this thing where you can't feel the stitching on the steering wheel. It is, of course, leather, but there's no hard stitching like you see here on the dashboard as to, I imagine, to not have any sort of rough surface on the steering wheel. And just to talk a bit more about the steering wheel, there's not a lot going on here. We have buttons, but they're all very well disguised as just chrome trim pieces. And we have this very nice matte wood. And we also have highway drive assist with this car, which is operated with these three chrome buttons on the left-hand side. So in that way, it is kind of BMW-ish in the way that it has radar crews and it will steer for you. I believe they call it level two. It isn't full self-driving, but uh, it does a pretty dang good job. Now, as far as differentiation goes from other EVs, you don't necessarily get the harsh punch in the back when you accelerate. And where it actually feels the most dramatic is when you're cruising at about 60 and you hit it, you obviously have that 664 pound feet of torque uh, at your back, but there's nothing immediate, there's nothing dire, there's nothing stressful about this car. And that is obvious. I mean, it is a Rolls Royce at the end of the day and a Rolls Royce first, an electric car second. And <laughs> I, it's always hard for me to review Rolls Royces. I've done it a couple times. I, I did a Cullinan and I did a Ghost. And whenever I go out in those cars, I just, it's so quiet, it's so serene that I find it hard to actually bring out any sort of driving characteristics because at a certain point, you just forget you're driving. You're just floating along in a capsule. In this case, a pink capsule. And I think that's what Rolls-Royce wants. They want you to be sailing. This is a nautical themed car as most Rolls-Royces are and it sort of looks like a boat from the outside, all the sort of lines that come into the center and being designed to be painted two-tone. It's just like sailing a big cruise ship down the road, and there's no other car that does it. There is not a single other car that feels like this. And that's why Rolls-Royce is able to charge you half a million dollars. Going around these corners with some momentum, you don't get the sense that there's a ton of body roll. This car has a sophisticated air suspension as well as rear wheel steering. So even though, you know, I go on and on saying that this car feels like you aren't driving it, 
that's kind of the point of all of the driving dynamics that go into it as well. The suspension, the steering, everything is set up and constantly thinking. There's, there's an algorithm just constantly going in this car to maximize the constant smoothness. Let's waft. <laughs> Such a good amount of power. The perfect amount of power in my opinion, because you wouldn't want this car to rip your face off. Now there is a drive sound that you can turn on, which I'll have to go in and, and figure out how to do that. But I've heard that it sounds like a didgeridoo, so I do actually want to find that. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and turn that on and I will get back with you once. Oh, actually, one other thing I want to mention is we have an augmented reality feature with our navigation system. And you can see this arrow here as I get closer, it's telling me to turn. So it's like you're playing Need for Speed. You've got the little arrows right here telling you where to go. Rolls-Royce sound is now on and we're going to hear it for the first time together. <laughs> Put us back into one pedal drive. That's pretty much exactly what I expected. I was told it kind of sounds like a didgeridoo. <laughs> I'm sure not ideally what uh, Rolls-Royce would like you to think, but it kind of sounds like the BMW i7. It's kind of like it has some Hans Zimmer to it. Let's go from a complete stop and see how the Spectre gets off the line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With Spirit, you also get wireless CarPlay, which we're gonna test out here in just a minute for our sound system test with this bespoke audio system. Ooh, I'm excited because Rolls-Royce has some of the best sound systems of anyone. So let's go ahead and we'll do that now as we're kind of just rolling along here uh, on this kind of two lane highway. I'm gonna get the sound system test queued up here. And of course, the song that we all know and love. Let's see how it sounds here in the Spectre. Okay, um, that is certainly one of the best sound systems I've ever heard, but it almost delivers the sound in a unique fashion because you don't have super punching, low powerful bass, but I feel like that kind of complements the whole vibe of this car and Rolls-Royce in general because you don't ever want anything to be forceful, you don't want anything to be chaotic, and this sound system complements this car pretty much perfectly. It's crispy, it's clear, and it has enough power. Don't get me wrong, it's not like you have no bass, but as far as something that I would pair with this car, that sound system goes super well, and uh, well, it demonstrated our favorite song just perfectly.
<laughs> what a thing. What a thing this is. <laughs> I'm really happy to be driving this car today because this is one of those first time experiences that will probably never happen again in the way that this is the most Rolls Royce car Rolls Royce has ever built. They've been striving to make this car for a century. I mean, and it's incredible to see it finally come to life, to see this vision finally be portrayed in the shape, well, in my case, of a big pink fast pack coupe and it's just beautiful it's fantastic i just love it it's great it's exactly what you'd expect think of this car as the final boss of rolls royce we'll have more like this of course because by 2030 rolls royce wants to be completely electric but this is the one that's pioneering it all this is one of those cars where you can't argue against it being electric rolls royces have never been about the engines of course the v12s have been silky smooth but they're not characterful they don't sound like anything unless you cut the exhaust off and that's that's where this car really shines is that there's no ice engine for them to work to make as quiet as possible. There's no transmission that they have to hide the fact that it's changing gears. It's just an electric car and it's what a Rolls Royce should be. And it's fantastic, it's brilliant. They've done a great job here with the Spectre. So I'm gonna finish up my drive here. We'll get you some last impressions here once we're pulling up to the ending point. But I mean, my biggest take here is that this is peak Rolls Royce. So overall, a fantastic thing. All right, guys, well, that's just about gonna wrap it up for us here in the Rolls-Royce Spectre. I imagine we'll have another chance maybe to drive one of these, but um, boy, am I happy and thankful to have had a chance to experience this car today. Um, this is unlike anything else, um, even as far as Rolls-Royce goes, and I think that that's really saying something. So they've made something really nice here, and uh, well, if you live in Europe, you can take this to all of the city centers that have banned uh, ICE cars. So you can have a Rolls Royce, drive it to the center of London or Paris or wherever you want to go. And uh, you can still pull up in a big pink 6,500 pound coupe and uh, no one will say anything. So that's a pretty cool thing. One last look at this thing. Cool guys, <laughs> what an experience. Thanks for tagging along and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Beautiful materials in the interior, of course, as any Rolls-Royce has. <laughs> so these vents, they're very pingy, and uh, I want you to listen to the turn signal. I was told that the turn signal is a recording of that noise mixed with another lower pitch noise to create that. So that's kind of a cool thing as well. I feel like I've blasted through this town before in a Mustang Mach 1. Everything's looking a little bit familiar. We're being less brash today in the big pink Spectre. Does Spectre mean ghost? I think it does. This is the big pink ghost. Even though it's not a ghost because Rolls-Royce makes a car called the ghost and this is not that. 